Hey, did I leave my base cap at work last week? I've been doing home office, so I didn't have a chance to check. Oh, and also when you're there, could you also maybe check for my body? I can't find it anywhere, so maybe I left it there when I changed for the gym last Friday? You're confused and didn't understand a word? Well, that probably means that you're an English native speaker and aren't familiar with how we use these English words in German. Hello, servus, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Felicia. I'm originally from Munich, Germany, but I've been living here in Cincinnati, Ohio, on and off since 2016. So a while back, I made a video about English words that Germans use wrong, or just differently, if you will. They're English words that have become part of our German vocabulary, but once we use them with a native English speaker, they have no clue what we're talking about, because for some reason, we use these words with a different meaning. I told you guys about 20 of those words in the last video, so if you haven't seen that yet, you should pause this video now, click up here, watch part one, and then come back here and watch the second part. Okay, you're back? Great, because today I have 10 more English words for you that Germans use wrong. Now, of course, we also use tons of English words correctly in German, like pretty much anything computer related including the word der Computer, but these words today can actually lead to some funny misunderstandings with native speakers. The first word is one that has been around for a few years, but it's been especially prevalent this past year, and it is home office. Now, this is probably pretty shocking to some of the Germans among you to find this word on the list, because we use this all the time, and I know that many of us are convinced that this is used in the English-speaking world as well. I know I was. So in Germany, we usually spell this as one word instead of two, like you would in English, and we use it as a synonym for what English native speakers would call working from home. You'll also often see the abbreviation WFH in English. In German, we'll say things like, ich arbeite seit neun Monaten im home office. I've been working in home office for nine months, or I've been working in the home office for nine months. Or, ich mache morgen home office. I'm doing home office tomorrow. Or, immer mehr Arbeitgeber erlauben home office. More and more employers allow home office. Now, it's not like the word home office doesn't exist in English, it does, but it usually just stands for a room that you have at home that you use as an office, like an Arbeitszimmer in German, and it doesn't stand for the process of working from home. So you could say you're working in your home office, but that would literally mean that you're working in that room, and I don't think that people who don't have an office at home would say it like that. Also in the UK, home office is actually the name of the ministerial department of the interior, so the in and so if you say that you're working in home office, people are probably just gonna assume that you're working for the government in some way and maybe just phrase that a little weirdly. The next word is one that has been part of the German language for a pretty long time, actually. I think it goes back to the 1960s or even before that. There's even a German song called Showmaster ist mein Beruf, so Showmaster is my profession by Rudi Carell from 1978. But in fact, this word doesn't exist at all in English, which is why it's described as a pseudo-anglicism, ein Scheinanglizismus. I've read that it's based on the English term quizmaster, which is a real English English word, usually describing the person asking the questions in a quiz show. Instead of showmaster, you would probably just say TV host or show host or maybe presenter in English. So a German showmaster is someone who hosts a TV show. And it was mainly used for those big Saturday night TV entertainment shows with games and guests. But since these huge TV shows that half the country would watch on Saturday night aren't really as big anymore as they were a few decades ago, the term showmaster isn't used as much anymore in Germany either. Nowadays, people who host these kind of shows are usually just called the moderator or maybe gastgeber. Now, a lot of these things that I'm mentioning in this video are pretty hard to know as a non-native speaker, unless you have some native speaker friends who can explain these kinds of differences and nuances in a language to you. In general, as I've mentioned in my video about language learning tips from two weeks ago, having people, friends to practice the language with is super helpful. And that's why I'm very happy that I could team up with HelloTalk for this video, because it's an app where you can connect with native speakers all over the world, which means that you can have real life conversations in the language you're learning. You can ask all of your questions, you'll have people help you correct your mistakes, and you can just find friends. Okay, so this is what the app looks like. So you have a profile and then you can look for people who 
speak the language natively that you are trying to learn and who also want to learn the language that you speak natively so that you can help each other. And um, yeah, I just put English and French in here, but you can also find many German native speakers. And then if you want to, you can filter this by um, serious learners, people who are nearby, if you want to meet up in person eventually, or you can also filter it by gender if you want to. Once you found people, you can just go to your Hello Talk tab and chat with people or even do voice calls or even video calls with them. Then there's the Moments tab, which is basically just like a social media timeline where people share all kinds of things, like just snapshots from their lives, questions about their language learning experience or maybe cultural related questions. And the best thing about the app, besides that it obviously connects you to people, is that wherever you see a sentence, whether it's in the messages or in your moments tab, you can always click on the sentence and then get the option to have it translated, um, corrected or have other people correct yours. To hear it spoken out loud, you can transliterate it if it's not written in Roman letters and you want to be able to read it. You can save it and so on. Here are some posts about German slang, for example, or some language jokes. And I even stumbled across a post that is about the same topic as this video. So if you're currently learning a language or you've always wanted to chat with an American and learn some American slang from them, I can 100% recommend this app. So if you're interested, check out the link in the info box below. Now, the next word on my list really does lead to misunderstandings. Like if you say to your boyfriend, babe, could you give me the body out of the closet? A body from the closet? Oh my God, wait, what did you do? Now, I believe that this is only something that's weird for Americans. I think British people use it the same way we do in Germany. A uh, body, how we usually pronounce it, is a piece of clothing that mainly babies or women wear. Americans would call it a body suit. If you just speak of a body here, that really only refers to your body, Körper, or to a dead body, so a corpse, Leiche. This is one that baffles me every time because I just don't understand why we couldn't come up with an actual German word for this one. But in Germany, das mobbing means bullying. We also have a Germanized verb for it, mobben, or someone wird gemobbt, is being bullied. The word has been around since the 60s or 70s in Germany, and it's based on the English word to mob, which means something like bedrängen or über jemanden herfallen. It was then first used in the context of animals attacking their enemy as a group, and was then adapted to describe bullying and harassment at the workplace and in school. So nowadays, the word mobbing is used in both Germany and in Scandinavian countries, whereas in English-speaking countries, people people usually call this bullying. I do believe that some English natives might understand the word mobbing, they might understand what you mean, but I've personally never heard an American say mobbing instead of bullying. Okay, this is a funny one because it can cause some heated discussions between Germans and non-Germans. In some contexts, German speakers and English speakers do actually agree about the meaning of this word. So this right here is a toast in German and also in English. This, however, and maybe just imagine that I had the square version of this. So this to most English speakers is just bread. And this is really more of a cultural difference, but it does lead to misunderstandings about the word. So here is what you need to know. In Germany, brot, bread, looks very different than, than this thingy here. <laughs> brot can look like this or this, or maybe even this, even though this is a bread roll, a brötchen, but it would still classify as brot. Brot does not need to be toasted and it's not so squishy that you can do this with it, like easily. <laughs> Oops, now it's falling out. But yeah, I usually go through the stores and do this to everything and everything that uh, you know, reacts like this, where I don't even have to be strong at all. I just grab it normally and it's very, very squishy. Um, that does not qualify as bread to me. That is toast in my understanding. So this kind of bread in German is called Toastbrot or Toast. So toast, we just pronounce it a little bit more German. So if you tell a German to buy some bread, they're never gonna come back with this. And if you refer to a pack of this as toast to an English native speaker, they will be confused and be like, you mean the bread? And it's because yes, to them, this is what bread typically looks like. And it only becomes toast to them when it's toasted. When English natives hear the word evergreen, they think of trees. 
Evergreens describe those kinds of trees that never lose their leaves or their needles. They're always green, such as pines or firs. Well, that's not at all what we mean when we use the word evergreen in German. To us, an evergreen is a song. It's a song that's been popular for a long time and that keeps getting played. So songs like New York, New York by Frank Sinatra, Over the Rainbow or Here Comes the Sun by the Beatles would be considered evergreens. We do also use it in other pop culture contexts sometimes, like I've also heard it being used in reference to famous moments in soccer or to TV shows. So Dinner for One, which I talked about in my episode about German New Year's Eve, could be described as an evergreen. Hey, yeah, I'm currently packing too. So how many slips do you think I should bring for the trip? Hmm? What kind of slip? What do you mean what kind? No offense, but that's really none of your business. Okay, so in English, slip can have many different meanings, but it usually stands for something like a paper slip, so just a sheet of paper, or it can also stand for a mistake, or the act of slipping on ice, for example. But one thing that it doesn't mean is underpants. Well, that's what it means in German. It's the short panties to be more precise, so briefs is what you would probably say in English. Apparently, this has to do with the fact that an underskirt can also be called a slip in English, which of course those aren't really super common anymore these days, but there must have been some confusion or mistranslation there at some point, and now slip in German means pennies. Wellness is an English word and it describes the state of feeling well beyond the absence of illness. So you're not just healthy, but you're better than that. That's not super far away from the German meaning, but in German, the word wellness has gotten a very specific meaning over time for anything spa related. So people will say something like, Ich habe meiner Freundin ein Wellnesswochenende geschenkt. I gave my girlfriend a wellness weekend as a present, meaning that you're going to spend your weekend at some kind of spa hotel. So even though I'm sure English native speakers understand it if Germans speak of a wellness hotel or wellness hotel in German or wellness Bereich, I think that they would probably mainly use the terms spa hotel or spa area. The last one on my list is on here because I just recently used it wrong in one of my Instagram stories. I said it and immediately thought, wait, I don't think this is an English word. I mean, it's English, but English speakers don't use it. And it's the word base cap that for some reason is a pretty common term for baseball cap in German. I couldn't find an explanation for this one, but I'm assuming that maybe kids in the 90s just thought that using an English word for these kind of hats isn't cool enough and it gets even cooler if you make an abbreviation out of it. So instead of baseball, they just said base. Anyway, English native speakers do not use this one. They will just call it a baseball cap, maybe just a cap or a hat. By the way, there's also an even more Germanized version of this word, which is Kepi, which you'll also often see spelled as Kepi with a K and an A umlaut, which almost hurts my eyes when I see it, but that also refers to the same thing, a baseball cap. So that was the last word on my list for today, but if you know of more English words that Germans use wrong or differently, let me know in the comments below. And also, if you're interested in these kind of videos in general, you can check out my playlist right here where you can find many more language-related videos like about German words that Americans use in English or false cognates or false friends between German and English and, of course, part one of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope I'll see you next time. Tschüss!